Hi guys, Morgan from Fabulous here. Today we're going to be doing an install on a Ford Ranger Raptor. Going to fit our 5 inch mid entry up to it. Come on and we'll give you a look. Righto, to start off with guys, I thought I'd give you a run through how to strip the car down, make it nice and simple, and some of the brief tools that we use to do so. So all the tools needed to fit one of our kits, pretty much all readily available from any Bunnings, trade tools, any spare parts store. From the get go, all you're gonna need is some marking out tools, so a good Sharpie, decent tape measure, a couple of Phillips screwdrivers, blow off, nine and a half mil drill bit, um, a basic nut cert gun. We use the Worth Ratchet one because it gives us good purchase on the nut certs, but pretty much any nut cert gun that you can squeeze will do the job. Um, you can pretty much get away with just using a ratchet for ratchet and a socket for all of the fitting. We tend to use screw guns because it saves our hands given we're fitting multiple at any one time. So for the five inch mid-entry Raptor kit, generally a bunch of sockets. Um, I'll run you through sizes right now. So we've got 10 mil quarter inch, um, another 10 mil, four mil Allen bit, which four mil Allen kit you can also use pick tool just helps with getting flare clips out uh, clip remover tool also the big plugs under the flare tends to help get those out nice and easily without wrecking your hands um, we've got a seven and an eight mil hose clamp tool phillips screwdriver flathead screwdriver blow off tool to get all the metal shavings off the car once we're done decent tin snips or side cutters any other sort of snips you need um, generally for cutting our pinch weld to make sure it's all sorted once you're done. Spiro band and a decent air hacksaw with a 32 tooth blade um, to make sure that it doesn't resonate through the guard while you're cutting it. Also use small tape measure. We tend to find that any sort of fat max or wide tape doesn't work as well and it will struggle to get in to the crevices around the quarter panel that you need to measure from. Um, other than that, power tools, screw gun, small rattle gun, and a drill. We find that these tools are the best suited for this purpose um, and make the job a lot easier to do in the long run. Next up, we'll run through the vehicle tear down. Um, just sort of give you a brief run through how to take the guard up. So generally, we'll start from any of our measurement points to make sure that when we're taking the measurements for the template, we're not going to scratch the car. Um, and also making sure we're getting enough coverage of the tape so that when we go to prime the guard once we're done cutting, we don't get any overspray on the vehicle. We also We'll run tape up the inside of the pillar where we have to drill the holes and nuts it. Just to ensure that when we're fitting and test fitting the snorkel, we don't end up with scratch marks down the inside of the pillar. So next we'll move on to removing the inner guard um, and the outer flare as well. It allows us access to the washer bottle we've got to remove. I tend to do this first before any of the engine based stuff just because it makes it easier. Next, I'll move on to getting the flare off. Um, the easiest way to do this is to work from the back to the front. So we don't remove the clips in these. Um, so long as you can get your fingers behind the flare here, you can work the flare up and off the clips. That way you can work the whole way around, get the flare off and then pull the two bumper clips um, just there. Next, I've just got to remove the last hidden scrivets for the inner guard. I'll then pull the inner guard out um, and that'll allow me access to the washer bottle. Next, I'll move on to getting this washer bottle out. So we we'll start by removing the washer lines off the bottle. Um, then you'll remove the pump wiring off the bottle just to make sure that it doesn't get in your way unplug it and push it out of the way there. 
I'll then pull the last line off the back of the pump and leave it all attached so it doesn't leak all over you. We'll then remove the 10 mil nut and then move to the engine bay after this to get the three M6 bolts out of the engine bay. Most of the time these are covered in Loctite so they're quite firm to get off. Um, so we use a rattle gun to get these out. So next I'll remove the bottle, I'll bring it down to this point, flip this clip over with your nail, put your finger on it so you don't get covered in water, and get it out of the quarter panel there. So next up we'll move through removing the air box and the radiator upper trim panel, that way it allows us access to drill a nut cert for the new washer bottle we're going to install, and it gives us the ability to modify the air box. Next I'll remove the intake air temp sensor plug off the back and then remove the clips. These clips can be quite tight so I tend to use a clip remover tool to get these off. And then I'll just put that out of the way so it doesn't get in the way of any cutting or modification. We'll also block off any intake points um, just to stop any metal particles from getting into the intake while we're doing our cutting. We tend to use the Giovanni cups because it, it's the favoured yogurt of <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Giovanni, if you're listening. <laughs> uh, let's go. We'll talk to Nathan. Hey? <laughs> He's a yogurt fiend in this joint. On you, boss. <laughs> Next, I'll undo the 8mm bolt for the intercooler pipe. Once I've loosened it, I'll then push it back and re-tighten just to allow for space for the new washer bottle we're fitting. So we're removing the radiator trim panel um, just to give us the access that we need to drill the two nine and a half mil holes to remount uh, our fabricated washer bottle. It does take a little while getting all these clips out, so if you have a screw gun, it may make it easier, even a clip remover tool, but I've found that you tend to damage the clips. So a Phillips screwdriver gives you the ability to pull the clips out and be able to reuse them. Uh, next I'll move, in, move on to drilling the two nine and a half mil holes. You also have to remove this plastic piece. Don't worry about breaking the clip because it doesn't, it's not needed in the kit anymore. Also, with our washer bottle, because it sits on top of the radiator support, I will screw the rubber stopper for the bonnet up to complete revolutions just to allow the bonnet to fit in the factory position. Next, we'll run through drilling the radiator support for our fabricated washer bottle. Generally, you're not having to take any measurements for this. You just use the factory holes and we just drill them out to nine and a half mil. We'll then add a tiny bit of countersinking just to make sure that nut so it sits flush. Then I'll come over, grab the nut certs and the nut cert gun. Turn the old uh, flick it over and spin him around. Makes it a lot quicker. Eh? Now that the stuff in the engine bay is done, I'll move on to marking out the template before I begin any airbox modification. So all our measurements 
on the Raptor come from the back point across and then we'll measure down from the quarter panel. Once I've measured it out, I'll double check just to make sure everything's exactly where it should be. And then I'll do my bottom of bracket measurement. This is a good guider to make sure we're putting the snorkel in the exact same position every time. When it comes to marking out the template, it does help to have some magnets on hand, just with the larger templates to stop them from moving around. These could be anywhere from a fridge magnet or just something to keep it secure to the quarter panel. Once it's in place, I'll then use a, a, a fine point sharpie essentially to trace around it. In your kit, you'll be uh, provided with a template that you'll have to cut out and then you'll trace around this same cutout like I am here. With the five inch mid-entry snorkels, I'll tend to cut two to three mil inside the template line just to allow for any discrepancy there may be in manufacturing of the bends. They tend to vary from a mil to two mil in diameter. So regardless of whether they're jigged or not, um, which all of our process are, processes are quite stringent. I tend to do this to ensure I can get the best starting point and the best cut and finish without minimal rework for essentially the best final product. So next up, I'll use the nine and a half mil drill bit just to get me a starting hole so that I can use the air hacksaw through the quarter panel. Tend to drill well inside of where the template mark is just so you don't run the risk of slipping and ending up outside your cart. Highly recommend safety glasses, earplugs. It is quite loud and quite annoying. Before test fitting the snorkel, We'll run a bit of pinch weld around any of the main slide contact points just to ensure we don't scratch the powder coat or the stainless finish. We'll test fit the pinch weld before we put it on for final fit just to ensure that it's pointing out instead of leaning in. So once you've made your first cut, you'll test fit the snorkel just to see whether there's any excess trimming that you need to do to make the fit perfect and we'll also mark the pillar once we've done our final fit. So because I've cut two mil inside, it'll be quite tight test fitting with the pinch weld. We generally test fit with the pinch weld to ensure that none of this surface gets scratched. I'll then line the bracket up with the bottom of bracket measurement, slide it inside the pillar and close the door. I'll then be able to have a look down around our cutout to make sure there's no excess areas that I need to cut. Generally with five inch, you'll need probably one or two retrims to get the cut perfect. So right now I can already see I've got a small gap, about two and a half mil all the way around the back. About a mil, mil and a half is acceptable because the pinch weld needs space to take up that gap. I can see here by pushing on the snorkel downwards that is putting outward pressure on the front of the snorkel right here. Every time I push down, it's trying to lift that point. So I know that that is the point that I'm gonna to need to start cutting to allow the snorkel to roll into the cutout. So generally, I'll take my Sharpie, 
have a look where it's needing more trimming, it's also pushing this part of the quarter panel in. So each cut I make, I'll only take about a mil, mil and a half off to ensure that I'm not removing too much material. So now I know those two areas need trimming. Everywhere else looks fairly uniform. The only other contact point is through the center here. I'll then trim those areas and then refit the snorkel. Always be careful removing and refitting the snorkel to ensure you don't scratch. I'll then refit the pinch weld, give it another check. So I'm just fitting the snorkel for the second time after I've done my first trim to see how the fit is. And as you can see now, if you look around the rest of the cut, there is now no gap to the pinch weld the whole way down the bottom. There's minimal gaps, maybe a mil at most to the rest of the snorkel. So I'm pretty happy with that. All the pinch weld, will be able to push up hard to the snorkel and it's not too tight and it's not putting too much pressure on the quarter panel. Next we'll move to marking the pillar now that I'm happy with the cutout. So I hold the snorkel, generally I'll put my thumb inside the end cap, just makes it easier while you're opening the door. Um, it is a lot easier having two people to help with install just for these sort of purposes. If it's your first time fitting, it can be difficult the snorkel can slip and you can damage your car. So I do recommend having two people at least for this part of the job. All right, so once I'm happy with the cutout, I've lined the snorkel, the bottom of the bracket up to the bottom of the bracket mark I made earlier. I'll then circle those, making sure that the bolt holes are center of the pillar. We tend to favor the outside of the pillar as much as we can just in case there is a double skin in there. You don't want to hit the double skin. It'll then impede your access for the nut set. Next up, once you're happy with your cutout, we'll move to cleaning up, getting rid of any swarf. Generally, you can use a file for this. We prefer to use this because it gives us a bit better control of smoothing out the cutout. After that, we'll move on to priming it and then drilling the pillar. I'll blow the quarter down before I prime just to ensure that the primer doesn't stick to any metal particles. We use Worth Zinc Rich Primer. We've found it does give us the best results for preventing rust in the long run. Um, when I'm spraying this too, because it's actually an open rail, if you don't back it before you spray, you'll end up with primer going all through your engine bay. Next up, we'll drill the pillar, same nine and a half mil drill bit. When you're drilling these, make sure you do brace your hands and control the drill. We tend to use high speed and low pressure because it alleviates the risk of running the drill bit through the hole and punching an outwards dent into your A pillar. Once I've drilled the first hole, I'll run a bigger bit just to run a light countersink to make sure that nutsert sits flush. Next, you grab your nutsert tool and the nutsert supplied in the kit. Pop them up into the pillar. Make sure the nutsert flange is sitting flush with the pillar to make sure you're not putting it in on the piss. Go firm, but don't over tighten, just to make sure you don't dent the pillar.
Once this step is done, you can remove your tape. Next up in the process, we've got the airbox modification. So first off, we'll run two cuts, about 40 mil long in each corner, right in the center of the seam where this, uh, the factory intake is actually plastic welded on. So I'll run the two cuts, then I'll use a flat blade screwdriver down through the sides and just slowly tap until this cracks off and splits all the plastic weld. After that point, we'll use a three and a half inch hole saw and we'll hole saw directly through the center point here, clean up with a file, and then I'll clean up on the linisher, or if at home, you could clean up with a file, um, a straight edge, or any tool you have at your disposal that's an abrasive, um, just to clean this surface up before you seal and rivet our blanking plate on. Um, sometimes you've got to be careful too because it's plastic when you're actually cutting it the plastic will remelt back in and tend to reseal the area you actually need to access. That's pretty much it. That in the bin. Then you'll grab your drill three and a half inch hole saw. That's pretty much it. So you'll notice you'll have all this swarf from the plastic weld and that seam that goes the whole way around. All we really want to do is just clean that up so it's a nice flat surface so we can apply our sealant um, and then rivet our plate back onto it. What you're left with after linishing is a pretty clean flat surface. I'll then use the straight edge of my ruler just to get all the sharp edges off. Generally, I've found like, unless you've got a, a metal or carbide bit um, to clean it up, Generally, any sort of abrasive leaves that furry edge. So you could either you could either burn the edge just to soften it, or I just clean up with the sharp edge of a ruler. So what you're left with is your hole inside of the airbox, um, the opening there, which will then install our blanking plate and our three and a half inch spigot to the side of the airbox. So what I'll do first before sealing it up, I'll test fit, make sure it's sitting level on the airbox, um, and then I'll drill the holes for the 1 8 inch rivets. So on the inside here, I'll keep firm pressure. Drill one hole, place the rivet in to make sure the blanking plate doesn't move when I'm drilling the other two. Once this is done, we'll move on to the spigot and do the exact same process. So depending on what work area you've got, it is easier to clamp the airbox to a bench, just be careful. So if you'll notice here, on our spigot, we have this piece. It'll then locate exactly where it needs to, so there is no rotation 
as long as you push it firm in, drill through that hole, and we only drill two more holes, your orientation should be perfect and the fit will be perfect every time. Once these holes are drilled, I'll then pull the rivets out and give the airbox a good blowout to make sure there's no metal swarf or plastic swarf left inside. So with these two, you'll always have to rivet the blanking cap on first because your access will be impeded to rivet once the spigot's attached. So first off, we just use a general roof and gutter sealant. We'll apply decent, probably three to four mil bead around that face there. Push the plate firmly on, then do the rivets and same will go for the spigot as well. Just be careful when you're moving the airbox too. These plastic clips tend to get caught underneath and you can snap them off quite easily. When you're doing the ceiling too, it's always good to have a rag handy so you can wipe off the excess once you're done. So then I'll apply another four mil bead around the spigot. Just make sure to remove any excess so you don't end up with a messy looking airbox. I know, and that's pretty much the finished product, ready to go back in the engine bay. Next up, we'll move on to the washer bottle. So first off, you've got to remove the level sender and the pump and the loom and transfer both the grommets and the pump and the level sender over to our fabricated washer bottle. So first off, remove the clips. Those are nice and easy. Next part is getting a flat blade screwdriver. You'll pop it under in between the grommet and the level sender, and that'll remove right out. The pump on the other hand, you'll lift it up out of its bracket. You'll then pry the screwdriver in between the grommet and the pump, and just give it a little wiggle. And you can then pop that right out. Remove the grommet as well. You'll next have to remove the O-ring from the level sender, and I'll put those aside. That can then go in the bin. So first off, pump grommet. Both of these can go in dry without any issue. The holes are laser cut to be the perfect size to seal with minimal fuss having to fit them. Just make sure they're all seated properly. Next up, I'll apply a small amount of grease to the face it's going to contact the o-rings I'll then run it around the o-ring first before pressing it in that there the correct orientation is with the plug facing towards the pump hole next up put your pump in as well same deal, work it around, 
and then just slowly work it as you're pushing it in. That's that. After that's done, you'll plug your loom back in and that's ready to fit in the engine bay. So because we're relocating the washer bottle to the engine bay, we have to then undo this rubber line from the original washer joiner and then we'll run our extension, which comes with a joiner nipple, into that up along the rail, along the loom, keeping it hidden and out of the way and run it over into the engine bay. So first off, I'll start by removing this hose from that. I will then spin that orientation to make that nipple point to there. That can then be run up along the loom and through to the engine bay. Next part, I'll put our washer extension line on just into the factory hose. Just make sure you push it past the last nail. Tend to run it up behind the clip. And with the zip tie supplied, just zip tie it to the factory loom. Once they're run through to the engine bay, you can then connect back up our washer line extension to the factory plug. And that'll just sit over there, waiting for the washer bottle. Next up, we'll take our fabricated washer bottle, install it back into the engine bay. First up, when you're reinstalling, make sure you plug the plug back in. Once the washer bottle is installed, you can then plug the pump back in and uh, make sure that all the factory plumbing is all hooked up. I'll start by putting the corner bolt in because the other two bolt holes go through the radiator support trim. So I'll loosely put that in before I refit the trim panel. Once the trim panel is clipped back into place, you can then fit your other two supplied 25 mil long M6 bolts. Plug the factory loom clip back in. We'll then tighten up the bolts. And reinstall all the factory clips. Once the trim panel's in, I'll then plug the washer line back in. And just be sure to rotate the pump down away from that coolant line. Next up, we'll reinstall the factory airbox. Be sure to pull out any of your blanking caps from the factory intake points. So with reinstallation, it has four factory mounting rubbers underneath. Just make sure you try to position these first before getting any of the intake points in because they tend to hold you up the worst. I'll then re-plug the clips back in the intake air temp sensor and put the plug back on. Once that's done, I'll then tighten the hose clamps. Once everything in the engine bay is completed, I'll then install the supplied silicon joiner and the two hose clamps. We tend to, for ease of fitting, apply a small amount of spray oil to the inside of the silicon. This helps for ease of fitting the snorkel and fitting the silicon to the airbox. We found the silicon tends to be quite grippy against powder coated surfaces. I'll then fit the 80 to 100 hose clamp with the bolt point facing upwards so you can access it from the engine bay. I'll then apply Firm pressure to that hose clamp with still allowing some movement so that when I go to fit the snorkel, I don't get bound up. I'll then fully loosen off the 90 to 110 hose clamp and slide it over the silicon facing outwards. Next up, we'll remove all of the tape that I've applied to protect the car and apply the pinch weld.
will apply the supplied pinch weld. Generally, this is directional. You'll notice one side's longer than the other. We tend to find that the short side facing outwards tends to be the right orientation. Sometimes this may not be the case. You need to try it first and see which way it points. When you're ready to trim off your excess, just make sure you allow an eight to 10 mil overlap and then push the pinch weld down so you end up with a nice seam. So once cut with my overlap, I'll then lift it back up, push it into place and then work back up to it. That way you end up with a nice uniform seam. It's hardly, hardly able to tell where you've cut. Next up, it'll be the snorkel install. So you grab your four mil Allen key or four mil bit, supplied screws. I tend to put a small dab of never seize on these just to ensure you never have any binding issues if you ever need to remove the snorkel. Tiny bit of canola oil spray just on the entry point. Even put it on the tight points of the pinch weld. This is where two people's hands really helps to avoid any scratching or possible damage. Once the pillar screws have been done up, we'll move to tightening up the silicon first off. We'll start with the engine bay. So once you've set the orientation, making sure the spigot's facing directly parallel to the snorkel, you can then tighten the airbox spigot hose clamp up and move on to tightening up the snorkel. When we go to do the final tighten of the hose clamp to the snorkel, I'll always leave it firm but loose. Rotate the snorkel out and down into the cutout and then tighten up. Once that's done we can move through to doing a final check with our pinch weld. Any small small gaps you can just press the pinch weld up into the cutout. just to ensure you have a perfect fit. Once you're happy with the fit up, remove all the flare clips. Tend to find the easiest way to do this is by putting your thumbnail on the back of the clip and pulling outwards just on one side. Once you've got all the clips removed, you can then reinstall them to the flare. So they just slide back up into the locators. Once you're done with reinstalling the flare clips, you'll then put the inner guard back in, followed by the flare and the mud flap. So you'll start by reinstalling all the scrivets that aren't needed by the flare. M6 retaining nut in the back of the inner guard. Once the scrivets and the inner guard are done, you can reattach the three larger plugs that attach to the chassis rail from underneath the car. 
Just check you haven't missed any clips before reinstalling the flare and the mud flap. So with the flare reinstallation, you just slide it up to the inner guard, put the locators in, and then just push. Followed by the mud flap. Then we'll just reinstall the three T25 bolts, one under there and two under the front. In the end, you'll be left with two clips and one bolt left over from the ones you removed in the engine bay. So before cleaning the car down, we'll fill up the washer bottle, test its operation, and then commence clean down. Righto, next we'll test its operation. Perfect example. So if you find once you've reinstalled and filled up your washer bottle that you don't have any water pumping through the jets, just pop that line off, run some water through the pump, and pop that line back on, and it should be perfect. Now it's just to clean the vehicle down, and we're good to go. Before wiping the vehicle down, I'll just give it a good blow down to ensure there's no metal particles sitting on the car. Um, even though we do blow the cars down, I highly recommend giving your car a good wash, even inside the engine bay as well, once we're done, to ensure there's no rust spotting. For cleaning the vehicle down, we generally use brand new microfiber, and I highly recommend FW1 cleaning wax, or Bowden's Clean Detail. Then get a dry part of the cloth and just wipe it off. So that's it for our five inch mid-entry Raptor install video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Realistically, any questions you've got, always refer back to your instructions. We've got it all well detailed. There's lots of instructive photos in there. If you ever get completely stuck, just give us a buzz on the phone and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hope you guys enjoyed, thanks.